Whoa, yeah, it's Kitchen Corner Cutlery. All right, sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so first up, apologies, I actually did record this one a little bit in advance because I didn't realize that I had recorded two of them last week. So, all right, that's why you probably still see the Mardi Gras nails. All right, so this is, as the blade would suggest, a Santoku. And this is a Mesomaster. And, uh, yeah, I've had this one for a very, very long time. Uh, I think even a little bit longer than the, uh, the Park Plaza, uh, cleaver that I'd taken a look at from these guys, uh, a few weeks back. And you can certainly see it has got some use over the years. This was, um... When these were uh, fairly new, I, I think they probably still have this name if they're still manufactured under uh, their Asian Precision line because these were, uh, uh, you know, they're made in Japan. They weren't uh, made in um, their German factories. And, yeah, this is a, a stamped blade. It's not uh, forged or anything like that. And uh, it doesn't say necessarily on the blade other than no stain uh but i do know that they did use an aos steel for it right now i'm not a thousand percent sure if it was aos 6 or aos 8 but eh, either way it came from hitachi um and yeah it's uh it's pretty simple but uh it served me well for many many years crap cutting board huh and yeah, because you don't have that um, shoulder of a, a bolster going on there, uh, the pinch grip might be a little bit less than, um, you know, is typically desirable sort of thing. But uh, you can see it does have a bit of belly for doing the rocking. So it is more of a uh, European um, designed one rather than... Uh, you know, the Japanese uh, style uh, original Santokus that were uh, pretty close to Nakiri's as far as like a very, very flat edge because they always do the forward cut. They, they don't necessarily do a whole lot of rocking in their cutting there. But yeah, this guy stayed uh, reasonably sharp for a very, very long time. Um, you know, obviously I don't use this guy a whole bunch anymore but up until me kind of taking a look at a lot more of these uh kitchen knives uh especially from uh tucson as well as nexus um heck i've had this in my knife block for a decade and uh yeah very very trusty it's uh it's a standard what seven inch to santoku i believe that's kind of standard for those guys yeah just a little just a hair over seven inches. And, uh, yeah, they, I mean, they did a pretty darn good job on it. Um, they use the same handle material, uh, POM or polyoxymethylene, I think it stands for. Um, we used to, uh, mention that when we would sell these guys, uh, that it's basically the same material that the, uh, the outer portion of a uh, bowling ball is made out of. So pretty hard material. It's not G10. But, uh, as you can see, it certainly holds up. I haven't really put this guy through the dishwasher or anything like that, but maybe a couple of times with, um, some idiot roommates. And I can see there is a little bit of, uh, separation that might be happening kind of right in this little area here that I'd never really noticed before, but, uh... Now that I'm looking at it, it looks like the blade actually tapers from back here out there. So it's probably just always been there and I never really noticed it. Yeah, so that fit and finish is a little funky. Um, which isn't all that much of a problem unless you're really worried about um, ingress of uh, bacteria in there or whatever. So you'd probably want to scrub it a little bit differently. But uh, yeah, so that's something a little new that I learned about it by... Uh, Taking a super, super close-up look at it. 
But uh, yeah, there's uh, not a whole lot going on here. It's a uh, it's a standard stamp blade Santoku, and uh, it's mighty fine at what it does. You know, you don't really have much in the way. Keep keep in mind, I have sharpened this many times over the years. So yeah, there is like a little tiny bit of uh, arcing there from the uh, the back heel. But uh, yeah, I mean it still functions pretty much exactly the same as you would want for it to function and uh yeah it's recently been replaced with a uh a tucson for me doing my uh my santoku tasks uh that being the uh what is it the 933 their uh, 14 c 28 n forged um santoku it's you know obviously a lot the same but it is forged so it has the uh the bolsters there and it's got a g10 handle that uh you know maybe a little bit more bulletproof and just you know it's nicer and it's newer so you know there you go but uh but yeah i certainly don't really want to ever get rid of this guy the reason why i do have <laughs> it's basically sitting in this is um i purchased this when i was working at my uh, cutlery shop um you know well over a decade ago um, and at that time, I bought this um, open stock, so we would basically have a whole bunch of them up on uh, knife magnets for people to come in and take a look at and uh, feel around on and everything. And uh, yeah, but they don't really have boxes or anything like that. They just kind of came with, um, you know, some blade guards. So that's kind of what I got going on there. Not super great for um, long-term storage, but uh, hey, it works. We did that with uh, Mesermeister Vustov and um, Zwilling J. A. Hinkles. Um, and from time to time, Global, but they usually did have a box in there. Yeah, whatever. But man, yeah, that really takes me back. I haven't really thought about doing retail for a very, very long time. I really switched careers over to uh, software QA. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this guy... Um, Man, I don't even really remember the price. It wasn't extravagant. Um, and keep in mind that uh, I did buy this basically at a uh, at an actual retail price, not you know MSRP that's usually knocked down. But I think it was like forty or forty-five bucks or something like that. So you know they're probably much cheaper if you can get them from other places. You know, probably somewhere around thirty or forty if they still make these. I don't know because I know they've um, they've really upped their game with a lot more uh, Asian range of uh, knives that they've done. Um, you know, in the Meridian Elite and uh, whatnot, but also they have their own um, Miyabi uh, line, I think. It's, um, yeah, I would really have to go back and take a look a little bit more at that. But uh, yeah. Mesermeister, as far as um, German cutlery goes, is certainly my favorite brand. And while obviously this was uh, made in Japan rather than uh, Germany, I do have some of their uh, German knives, and they're fantastic. And I think I've taken a look at one or two, and I have some others that uh, will be featured here uh, in the coming days and weeks and whatnot. So, uh, yeah. I also do have uh, Hankels. I got a Shun. Um... It's just a paring knife, but hey, I have it. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, just some random other ones. Uh, you know, that they'll all eventually get uh, talked about and whatnot. But, yeah, if you're looking for a uh, super simple um, Santoku knife, then uh, you really can't go wrong with this one. It's, uh, you know, stamp blade of uh, AUS something or other. I... I really want to say it's AOS 8A, but uh, like I said, it's not stamped on the blade, so uh, I can't 100% uh, guarantee that. But I will do my best to uh, kind of look up that information, and uh, I'll put it in the description that I usually have with other statistics and whatnot for the knives. So uh, people have some, uh, you know, written um, uh, reference materials and whatnot for them. So there you go. All right, that's the uh, the Mesermeister 
Asian Precision Seven Santoku. A great workhorse that I've used for over a decade and it really hasn't let me down. Alright. Well, as always, I appreciate y'all for watching, if indeed you actually have. And uh, have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo.